Welcome back to 5-Minute Fantasy Football. Today we're talking about the Atlanta Falcons as we continue our series of NFL Fantasy Football previews. This is going to be the NFC South episode. The season is just around the corner. Make sure you go to Underdog Fantasy, download Underdog, and use promo code FFSGPN so they know he sent you. Uh, with the Atlanta Falcons, uh, Zach Robinson now is the play caller. Arthur Smith's out of town. And we expect a very different style of play from this offense. Raheem Morris comes over. Um, both of them coming from the Sean McVay tree over there from the LA Rams and Kirk Cousins is the new quarterback, big free agent landing. Uh, he is coming off of a, a, an Achilles injury and, uh, last year he was amazing, uh, but we don't know what he's going to look like coming off of this team. Um, but there is a lot of excitement. And so, uh, Kirk Cousins right now is being drafted a little bit lower than where Mike has him finishing. He's, I think he's getting off the board around QB 18. Mike has him finishing as QB 15. Uh, for just at 4,000 yards, exactly 25 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. Uh, if you can get that to, you know, 30 or, or higher on the touchdown mark, then uh, you could see a top 10 finish. Um, we know there's not going to be a lot of rushing, but, but uh, he does have two rushing touchdowns here from Mike Clay. So Mike, Mike Clay is projecting a couple sneaks. Um, and then we got Michael Penix Jr. Who, you know, if he were to come on into this offense, you know, if you're in super flex leagues, he's not a bad stash. Um, because if he were to take the keys to this offense, he could run with it. Uh, B. John Robinson, uh, he's, you know, the top three running back. Um, I have him at number two. Uh, he's being coming off the board at number three. Mike has him finishing at number three. Um, getting a ton of work. 218 rushes, 977 yards on the ground with seven rushing touchdowns. 88 targets. It's huge. A target is worth one and a half times a carry in fantasy football, especially in your PPR formats. 65 receptions, 571 yards, four, four receiving touchdowns. It's 11 total touchdowns, a, no, a number three overall finish. But Tyler Algier, he's getting, you know, he's getting undrafted in some of your redraft leagues, and he's he's finishing as the RB 37. Someone not to sleep on. Um, Mike has him projected for quite a bit of production: 577 yards and five touchdowns on the ground, 214. 28 catches, 214 yards, and one touchdown through the air. He's getting, yeah, Mike has him finishing much higher than what he's currently being drafted at. And on top of it, you know, God forbid something happened to B. John Robinson, Tyler Algier could be a league winner. And you literally are, are can pick up on wait, waivers right now or take him with your last pick. So he's a great high, high value handcuff that, you know, Mike has some standalone value. Um, Drake London, uh, everyone's projecting a breakout for Drake London and Garrett Wilson, who ironically are both with aging quarterbacks with Achilles injuries. Uh, Drake London uh, was drafted one spot ahead of, of Garrett Wilson, and uh, he's a big playmaker. He's had some he's had some success for fantasy football, just not enough for us to be completely confident in him and being our number one option. Um, but he's being drafted to where you – pretty much have to take him as your wide receiver one, unless you go back to back receivers in your draft. And uh, he's going on the second round and uh, the latest third round. My cousin finishing as wide receiver 14, 128 targets, 84 receptions, 1,033 yards and seven touchdowns. That is 227 PPR fantasy points in 15 games. Darnell Mooney. He's got him finishing as the wide receiver 45, which is a little lower than where he's being picked. He's being picked in the fifties. Um, he's, I think he's a sleeper. I think he's a little bit of a value. I know Kyle Pitts is there. I know Bijan Robinson's going to get a ton of work, but Darnell Mooney's a good football player. And he just was in a crappy situation the last few years. Mike has him producing pretty well. Um, 56 receptions, 819 yards, six passing, six receiving touchdowns, finishing as the PPR wide receiver 45. He's someone, again, if you want to take him with your last pick, you could get him for free. Um, no one really else is Ray Ray McLeod, Cardell Hodge, uh, Rondo Moore's out for the season. Uh, Casey Washington projects to make the roster, but they could add somebody um, during the cuts and things like that, but they really don't have another guy. And part of that is because they have Kyle Pitts. And so Kyle Pitts, everyone is a little, uh, they're a little tired of the Kyle Pitts hype. This guy went and crushed it his rookie year and, and crushed any expectations we had for rookie tight end. But then he set the bar extremely high, and he's fallen short the last two seasons. Uh, last year, uh, he missed half the season due to injury. But even in the games that he played, a lot of air yards, but not a lot of fantasy points. And so he has his, Mike has him finishing his tight end nine. 
which is higher than where he's going. He's going off the board as tight end six. Mike has him projected for 99 targets, 60 receptions, 831 yards, and four receiving touchdowns. Um, if Charlie Warner or Ross Dwelly catches a touchdown past week one, fantasy uh, the fantasy community might explode. Uh, all right, let's talk about – that's five-minute fantasy football. Let's talk about our next team. Next up is the Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers were absolutely garbage last year. Adam Thielen brought you a little bit of fantasy production at the beginning of the season. Chuba Hubbard at the end of the season. But at the end of the day, this was a very bad offense, a very bad team that was really the joke of the NFL. Um, so let's talk about it. Again, I got Mike Clay's projections. We're going to talk a little bit about sleeper ADP. And, of course, go to Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code FFSGPN so they know we sent you. Bryce Young. Uh, you saw him in the preseason. I mean, he's just, he can scramble. He's not a runner, but he can scramble and create. We saw that last year, too, where, you know, because the offensive line was so bad, he really had to run for his life. Um, he's had a pretty good offseason. Uh, they added Dave Canales coming over from Tampa Bay. He used to be the Seattle Seahawks. I uh, was a coach for the Seahawks with Geno Smith when he had his revitalized career offensive coordinator. Then he was offensive coordinator, um, like a QB coach in Seattle. And then offensive coordinator, QB coach in um tampa bay and uh, we saw baker mayfield get paid so he got two people paid and he's hoping bryce young is the third um he gets the head coach job and they've done a lot in investing on the interior line um that's a huge thing for bryce young uh, his offensive line was terrible but of course due to his stature and everything like that the offensive line is extremely important in the middle so robert hunt a few other big ads to the interior um, Mike doesn't think that's going to be enough to get him into fantasy, uh, our, our fantasy football drafts. He's going as, as he's going off the board right around QB 29, 28. He's Mike has him finishing as QB 26, um, 3,531 yards passing 20 passing touchdowns, 12 interceptions and on the ground, uh, only 268 yards and one TD. Um, I think you do a little bit more on the ground than what's on here. We don't want him running a ton. But just the way we, he scrambles, the way I watched him last year, um, as well as in the preseason, it's part of his game. And he's going to do that uh, enough to where I think he's going to need more than 268 yards as long as he stays healthy all year. Andy Dalton's the backup. The running back situation is one to watch. Fantasy uh, community loves Jonathan Brooks, and a lot of analysts are telling you to go after Jonathan Brooks because he's a league winner. I would tend to draft him a little bit more cautiously than what the uh, fantasy community is doing right now. Currently he's going in the fifth round in your fantasy football drafts based on sleeper ADP. And that is way too aggressive for me. This guy, they've already came out. So they're going to be, um, they're going to be slow with uh, and careful with his use. Um, he may not hit the field till weeks four or five. So he's going to possibly start on the pup and Chuba Hubbard was good last year. And so if they have Jonathan Brooks and they're thinking about the future, why would they not just run the brakes off of Chuba Hubbard? They're not going to just give Jonathan Brooks the entire workload like Rashad White did last year, in my opinion. What Mike has it is a split. You have, a you have 11 games for Jonathan Brooks, 144 carries, 661 yards, five touchdowns. Through the air, 24 receptions, 175 yards, and one TD, finishing as the RB40. So, of course, if he doesn't start a game until week eight and does all of this, you're perfectly happy with where you drafted him. But if you get a guy that doesn't come into the field, that doesn't start playing until week five or six, and he's splitting carries, you're gonna be very disappointed. So I think right now, based on what's going, based on based on the players you're having to pass to draft him, I'm staying away from Jonathan Brooks unless he falls in the seventh or eighth round. Chuba Hubbard, on the other hand, is a guy that you really don't have to pay much for at all. 10th, 11th, 12th round. And he's going to be the starting running back right off the bat. So I would rather invest in Hubbard. And then, yeah, you can trade him throughout the season. Or, you know, if Jonathan Brooks comes in, you're you're moving him to your bench. <laughs> like, you weren't, you're really not supposed to start 10th, 11th, and 12th rounders anyways. So he's just the death pieces at that point. But he could, you know, keep the backfield for a little longer. Um, he's got him projected for 561 yards on the ground with five rushing touchdowns. 30 receptions, 198 yards through the air, and one TD finishing as the RB43. So again, he's got Jonathan Brooks finishing way lower than where he's being drafted, and he's got Chuba Hubbard finishing way higher than where he's getting drafted. Then Miles Sanders is still on the team. 
Miles Sanders could end up making the team, but he also could be a cap gouge really because of his contract. You really don't want to pay your running backs much at all, especially your third string running back. So Miles Sanders could be a guy that's, you know, that's cut and he could have some interest. You know, he could be a guy that ends up on the Cowboys um, who need a running back. You can go to the Colts where there's some familiarity with Shane Steichen. Um, there's some other teams that, you know, uh, the Jaguars are a team that's from Doug Peterson's familiar with Miles Sanders. So um, Sanders could find a home somewhere, a veteran back that has, you know, that has had some flashes in the NFL. But if he stays on the Panthers, there's absolutely no fantasy value. Um, Deontay Johnson, big free agent, you know, uh, we'll say free agent acquisition. They traded for him, gave him a big contract, gave up Dante uh, Jackson. And uh, he's coming off the board around where he's being drafted, right around wide receiver 32. Um, right now he's finishing at wide receiver 32 in Mike's uh, projections. And that gives him, uh, he's he's really projecting Adam Thielen and Deontay Johnson to split the work. And I think that would frustrate Deontay Johnson um, you know, managers. Um, right now where he's being drafted, you can't really put huge expectations on him. But if you're every every week having to deal with who's the guy, it's going to be frustrating. And he's got him getting 117 targets, but he's also got Adam Thielen getting 100 targets. Deontay's catching 72 of them for 989 yards and six touchdowns. Adam Thielen's ca- catching his 74 of his 100 targets for 709 yards and five touchdowns. And he's finishing as a wide Adam Thielen finishing as a wide receiver 49, Deontay Johnson finishing as the wide receiver 32. I'm okay with Johnson, and I do think there's potential for him to, to go higher than that. But I do think this could be a situation where you see, you know, the offense shared around a little bit. You have Jonathan Mingo that they're trying to get going. You got Xavier Leggett that they're trying to get going. Um, Adam Thielen started the year off really strong last year, and then he faded. Is that something you see? Um, I do think Deontay Johnson should be, you know, the number one, but it's just, does he get enough volume? Because you know that in the past, he's been a low A dot, not been a huge yards after the catch guy, and he's not been a huge touchdown guy. And so, yeah, in your PPR format, 72 catches is great, but if you can't get over a thousand yards and you, you know, if he doesn't hit over five touchdowns, be extremely disappointed. Um, so Deontay Johnson's a guy I'm willing to take him as long as he's at a good value in the drafts, but not someone I'm targeting and expecting to start on a weekly basis. Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Mingo. I'm just not interested in redraft. I mean, if you want to take a shot on someone, you can take a shot on Xavier Leggett. Um, he's a first round receiver and they're going to try to get him going, you know, see what they can. Um, but he's, he's a late, late breakout guy. He's, you know, a size freak. He's not necessarily a polished route runner. Um, so I don't know how they're going to use him. And, you know, you might, you know, just pick him up and then week one or two, you can drop him if you don't like it. But, uh, you know, he's someone that I'm not necessarily targeting, um, especially with Bryce Young. We don't even know if he can support one one or two receivers, let alone three. Uh, and then Tommy Trumbull is projected to be the top tight end. I, I would prefer Jatavian Sanders. Uh, I think Tommy Trumbull has been in the league for four years now and hasn't done anything. Um, so Sanders is the, he's definitely profiles as the receiving back. And so, um, you're just not getting a lot of production here. He's being drafted so late that you can pick him up or just wait and see what happens and get pick him up for waivers. Mike has projecting as, as tight end 48 again, just not enough to go around here. And so, um, I wouldn't do anything with the tight ends. Now let's talk about the new Orleans saints. Again, this is five minute fantasy football. Appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, Derek Carr is the quarterback. This is Mike Clay's projections. Mike Clay, Mike Clay has Derek Carr projected to be the quarterback 25. He has him projected for 3,820 yards, 22 passing touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. He's also got him projected for 84 rushing yards and one TD. Derek Carr is being drafted right there at the QB 25 spot on sleeper. And for me, I'm just not interested. Uh, between the turnovers, the lack of TD numbers, um, it's just, it's never been the same. And we are always like, we're, we're kind of living in the past with Derek Carr back when he had Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper. That was a long time ago. He's not been good for fantasy football for a long time. And he continues to, um, to hang out there. I would rather take some high upside guys in this area because Derek Carr is just meh. And, um, honestly, he doesn't even give you enough, 
um, you know, enough high upside to even put him in the like average territory. I'd put him below average. Um, Alvin Kamara, um, Alvin Kamara is is losing it. Um, he's becoming a very inefficient player, but because Derek Carr's propensity to to target um, the running backs, Alvin Kamara was good for fantasy football last year, even after serving his suspension. And I expect the same thing. I'm okay with Alvin Kamara being, you know, my RB one um, in PPR formats. He's going to get so much work in the receiving game. And we haven't really seen anybody step up as the RB two. Um, Kendra Miller, he might start the season off on the PUP with a hamstring injury. The coach seems to hate him. The coach is very annoyed. He said, we haven't really got anything uh, since the college tape because he's just not available. Jamal Williams is awesome interview. He's a hilarious, funny guy, but he's uh, he's not been the same since you know he left Detroit. And so Alvin Kamara really took over and had the majority of the work last year. And Mike Clay's pretty much got it projected the same. 183 attempts in 14 games, 82 targets. So that's you know projected for um, over 200, about 250 touches. He's got 183 attempts, 67 receptions, 480, 488 yards through the air, two touchdowns in the air, finishing as the RB9 in PPR. Kendry Miller, he's got finishing as the RB51. If he goes on the pup and is not ready to go at the beginning of the season, you can see those projections change. And Jamal Williams would then project to be the number two, unless they brought in somebody else. Um, there has been some love for Jordan Mims, um, but we don't even know if Mims is going to make the roster. Um, he could make the final cuts and then a practice squad guy or somebody gets moved over and he gets, he doesn't make that round. So we'll see what happens to Kendra Miller. I think that's going to be a big impact on Jordan Mims. That's kind of the guy to watch as far as like a, a sleeper in this backfield, but I wouldn't, wouldn't touch anything except for Alvin Kamara in here. Uh, Chris Olave, he's going off the board pretty early, um, but not as high as Mike has him projected. Olave is going, uh, you know, a little bit outside. Uh, you know, he's, he's in that like 11, 12 range. Um, with Devontae Adams and Marvin Harrison Jr. and Drake London. Um, Mike hasn't projected to finish as a wide receiver nine. Um, 139 targets, 86 receptions, 1,262 yards, and six touchdowns for a wide receiver nine finish in PPR formats. That'd be huge. Uh, I love it would cash in and be a little bit of a value for a guy being drafted right around or outside the first round. Uh, Rashid Shahid is a guy that um, you know came on last year. He's got some big playability. Special teams, we'll see how involved he is with the new um, kickoff rules, and that could affect how your scoring goes. Like If your team does not count kick return touchdowns or does count kick return touchdowns and counts kick return yards, Shahid could get a little bump in your rankings and your ADP. Uh, he's projected for 86 targets, 55 receptions, 749 yards, and four receiving touchdowns um, as far as the, the PPR finish. Why does your 58? Uh, a little bit around, I think he's going to draft it a little bit earlier than that, but um, he's a guy that, you know, you might, you might be able to put him on, you know, put him on, on, you know, on a spot when you have a waiver, you know, issue or injuries, but not someone I'm really targeting. No one else on this offense really stands out. Bub Means is a name to watch. A very productive receiver, averaged over 17 yards a catch at Pitt. Uh, wide receiver uh, 112 is what Mike has him finishing as, so. Not really much over there. Um, Taysom Hill, um, that is a name to watch and a guy I'm interested in. Um, they have Taysom Hill and Juwan Johnson finishing as top 20 tight ends. Taysom Hill, um, they keep glowing about him. He could be the leading rusher on the team, um, but at least be the second leading rusher on the team, especially with Kendra Miller situation. Taysom Hill really could get a bump. And if you can put him in the tight end spot, he's a cheat code. And so um, finishing at tight end 18, I mean, he could finish a lot higher than that if he ends up rushing the ball a ton. Um, plus you have the passing, you know, the passing uh, part of this. He's projected to be the top tight end with um, 295 rushing yards and three uh, rushing touchdowns, also 80 yards uh, through the air, um, 30 uh, receptions, 274 yards and two touchdowns. Juwan Johnson's interesting. You know, he moves like a receiver. Um, unfortunately he just can't stay healthy and that's been the biggest concern with him, but Juwan Johnson looks like he's gonna be good to go for week one. He's got him. Mike's got him projected for 45 receptions, four receiving touchdowns and 19, uh, is his finish. Um, Taysom Hill's being drafted right around 10 and 18, but Juwan Johnson's not even being drafted at all.
Now let's talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay was one of the biggest comeback stories last year. Baker Mayfield, uh, nobody really expected this team to do anything, and they end up making the playoffs. Baker Mayfield earned a big contract. Dave Canales is now in Carolina, and now we can see if Baker Mayfield can give them, you know, give them what they paid for. Uh, Mike Clay has him projected for 3,906 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. This is Mike Clay from ESPN's projections. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the fantasy impact and the fantasy um, ADP for these players. Um, so uh, rushing, he's got 162 yards and one rushing touchdown, finishing as the QB 19. Um, it's a little bit lower than where he's being drafted. He's been, being drafted right around QB 24. Um, so if you were to get Baker and Mayfield in your super flex leagues, you could, you, you could put him in and get a pretty good value here based on where he's, where he's finishing um, on Mike Clay's projections. Rashad White uh, was not an efficient runner last year, but he got tons of volume. And that is the big question this year. Is Bucky Irving going to be able to do enough to take some of that volume down, specifically in the passing game? And it's really hard to say that with Rashad White because Rashad White caught 86% of his passes his rookie year, and last year was 91%. It's incredible. So you're really going to take him off the field for anybody? Um, so, I mean, Bucky Irving's a good player, but I mean, 91% is really hard. And then he also was able to turn a lot of those receptions into good yardage. Um, Mike Clay hasn't projected to finish as the RB 11. Um, he's being drafted a little bit higher than that. Um, but you know, right around RB nine, RB 10, um, rushing, uh, 872 yards on the ground with six rushing touchdowns, 53 receptions for 396 yards and two more touchdowns on the ground finishing as the RB 11. Uh, Rashad White's a guy that you don't really feel confident as your RB one, but you're going to be ha- you have to choose between him, um, you, Devon Achan. You're going to have to choose between um, uh, a, a guy like uh, you know Isaiah Pacheco, and so those that's that's the range he's going in. I would prefer Pacheco. I think he's on a better offense, and I just trust him a little bit more. But I'm okay with Rashad White, um, where he's being drafted in the third, fourth round. Mike Evans, Mike Evans and a thousand yards. It just happens. And Mike Clay's got it happening again. Uh, be incredible. If it happens again, uh, hopefully Mike stays healthy and does it. Um, and if he does it, Mike has him projected to be a wide receiver one and he's being drafted a lot lower. I mean, it's a lot of his, his age. Everyone's waiting for the shoe to fall off. They don't love Baker Mayfield, but Mike, Mike Evans really uh, showed us last year after being drafted 29th, 30th in your drafts finishing as a top 12 and Mike hasn't doing it again. He's got him finishing as wide receiver 11, 130 targets, 77 receptions, 1,138 yards and seven touchdowns. Chris Godwin. He's got him projected to finish as, as wide receiver 28, a little bit higher than where he's being drafted, uh, finishing with 124 targets, 81 receptions, 973 yards and five touchdowns. Again, these are in 15 games projections, 14 for the running backs. And, Chris Godwin, they're talking about moving him back to the slot, which is tough because Jalen McMillan, Sterling Shepard, and Trey Palmer are all slot guys. So we're going to see how this works out. Um, you know, if they are able to move him back to the slot, um, if they do, Godwin's always been um, produced more from the slot. And so that, that could help for fantasy football. But in this case, they have Jalen McMillan actually taking the slot role um, and Chris Godwin being the, the number two. Uh, as far as tight ends, uh, Kate Otten is the number one tight end. Uh, 65 receptions, four, 43 yards, 457, uh, or, yeah, 43 receptions, 457 yards, and three touchdowns. Finishing as a tight end, 21. Um, not someone I'm really picking up. Um, you know, he's someone that you might get off waivers for a spot start and a good matchup, but no one I'm targeting. Uh, my targets in this offense would be Rashad White and Mike Evans. Um, Chris Godwin is a decent value pick if you can get him in the right, you know, right spot. Um, not very interested in Bucky Irving. Uh, right now, Mike's got Bucky Irving projected for 73 carries, 316 yards, two touchdowns, uh, 17 uh, targets, 13 catches, and, and 94 yards with one touchdown, finishing his RB65. So, you know, White is obviously the handcuff if, uh, you know, projected handcuff if White were to go down. But because of his size, you know, you, concerns would be that Chase Edmonds or one of these other guys could end up, you know, splitting the, splitting the role with him and him not getting the same kind of volume that White gets. So 
Uh, that's the NFC South. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure you check out our other episodes at SGPN Fantasy. And uh, make sure you go to Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code FFSGPN so they know we sent you.